The show has begun. Shohei Otani hits his first home run in the regular season as a Dodger. The Dodgers get the win by a final score of 5-4. to four. They sweep the San Francisco Giants, and they needed that Otani bomb because the following inning, Jorge Soler, he ends up hitting a home run off of Daniel Hudson. But what a moment at Chavez Ravine. We knew it was coming. We knew it was on its way. We knew that it's only a matter of time that Shohei Otani was going to erupt of course, if you saw me on Twitter during that bat, I said Otani about to hit his first home run as a Dodger here. And of course, sure enough, Shohei Otani, he goes yard for the first time in Dodger Blue. And there we have it. And it was just it was a, it was a majestic bomb. It was a huge bomb by Shohei Otani, 430 foot absolute tank job, and it was the first time that Taylor Rogers had given up a home run to a left-hander since May of 2021. So the fact that it was off of a lefty makes it even that much more impressive. And I could watch this all night. I mean, Shohei Otani just boom. Shohei Otani leaving the yard for the first time as a Dodger. What would you guys do with that ball? I'd probably just give it to Shohei Otani and maybe ask him for a full-blown 20-minute interview. But uh, what would you guys do with that ball if you caught Shohei Otani's ball? Where you represent Dodgers Nation from tonight, guys? So welcome to the show, the number one Dodgers YouTube channel, the number one Dodgers show here, Dodgers Dugout Live, also Dodgers Nation post-game show. And what an exciting night because, I mean, Tyler Glass now, he really went out there, and the most important thing after a bullpen game, he was able to go six innings. And yet, yeah, into a little bit of a trouble there in the sixth inning, he left a a little cement mixer up there earlier in the game, but the Dodgers went out there and they just won and they beat the San Francisco Giants team that was desperate to find a way to get a win. In LA, they score five runs again. Five runs every game to start the season. This offense, they go out there and they put up runs. I mean, it wasn't just Shohei Otani. Earlier in the game, Otani is able to score on a single from first. Yeah, we're going to break this whole game down, though, but welcome into the Dodgers Nation post game show. Look, I can watch this all night. I can watch this all night. I think I see it again. Boom! The show has begun. Look at that. That's a deep bleacher reacher right there. Absolutely obliterated it. And look, I think with Otani, what you're kind of seeing is him in the box is those fastballs that are up and in previously you'd see that big swing where he can get around to those. And I think that the injury was playing a little bit of a role here, but I like the fact that he gets that first home run and now he's going to absolutely take off from the slugging department. And Shohei said after the game to Kirsten Watson that early this morning he had a meeting with Dodgers manager Dave Roberts and Dave told him to be himself, to not put too much pressure on him. And he goes out there and he hits his first home run as a Dodger. So a special night by by the way, if you're new to the channel, new to the show, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Definitely hit that like button for your Los Angeles Dodgers who sweep the San Francisco Giants. RIP to that baseball right there. I see the comments rolling in. So let's dive in. We've got Bob Nightingale. Otani had the over on his homers tonight. Okay, that's a fire take. By the way, all the super chats go to paying off Ipe's debt. Uh, Miggy Rowe looking fierce from Boomer Sass. We're going to talk some Miggy Rowe because Miguel Rojas, he he hit his second home run, his second home run of the season. Last year, it took him 257 at-bats to hit his first home run. This year, two home runs in eight AB. So, hey, I'm just saying, you look at an elite offensive shortstop, an elite defensive shortstop. Do they have that Miguel Rojas? I'm not so sure, but I do know that it's great to see him getting off to a really good start, putting more aggressive swings, bigger swings, and just really going out there and trying to do damage. And he has nothing to lose. We got Justin says Rojas has as many home runs as freshman. We got uh, Muncie Gold Gloves season finished. Absolutely. That's a longtime watcher of the show. We always know that SF stood for season finished San Francisco Showtime LA. Los Doyers, Cubs fans already talking smack saying bring on the Dodgers. Oh yeah, I mean would you like to see Otani leave the yard before he heads up to Wrigley? Ryan Kim, Otani. Oh yeah, the comments are blowing up tonight guys. What is up? Otani's line out to left was a great sign. Next at bat, it's a bomb. Looks like he adjusted his approach. Yeah, if you look at the approach, you're seeing him in the box 
kind of that whip style swing, he's really finding the way to get the timing down. And that's what was the big difference there is from a timing standpoint, the bat just wasn't in the zone as long as we've seen it in the past. And I think for Otani, when he's truly locked in, he's truly seen the ball well, the ball, the bat is in the zone for long enough to really catch up to any type of pitch, whether it's a fastball up and in, that pitch happened to be a fastball on the outer third, and he was still able to extend and get that home run and get the bat on the baseball. But he's already set records for exit velocity and how hard he's hitting the baseball. It's just about him going out there and just feeling comfortable again in the box. I mean, we've seen him get down early in counts and you're not really getting necessarily hitters counts. That is not going to be the case. Now, Shohei Otani has that first home run. He's got the slump buster out of the way. Now he's going to, I think, carry this offense along with Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, all the stars for the next couple of weeks. I truly believe he's going to go on a heater so get excited, Dodgers fans. He just had to get that first one out of the way. I mean, don't kid yourself. Like I said, he's superhuman, but he still is human, okay? This is someone who, dealing with a little investigation with his best friend, Ipe, that has to be weighing on him mentally. Dealing with coming back off the injury, kind of protecting that right arm, that has to be affecting him. Just getting used to seeing the ball at Dodger Stadium every single day, that had to have been affecting him. Also, sign that big contract, $700 million. He knows why the fans showed up. They know that they put their good hard-earned money on those tickets because they wanted to say, hey, I saw Shohei Otani in Dodger Blue. So was he pressing a little bit? I think it's fair to say he probably was, but that's where, hey, Dave Roberts this morning has a conversation with Shohei Otani, tells him not to do too much, and what happens? Goes out there and hits a home run. I talked to Ken Griffey Jr. about this, and we talked about how, really, if you go up there trying to hit a home run, you'll never hit a home run. He said he's only done that a handful of times in his life, where he's went up there trying to hit a home run, and he actually did it. You just can't have that approach. You just want to go up there, put up good swings, make good contact, and good things happen. And that was certainly how it appeared on that bomb by Shohei Otani. Otani's confidence is going to skyrocket. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he wants to get back there in the box and just crush dingers once again. Because like I said, it was a big time bleacher reacher. What would you do with that baseball though? Let me know down below in the comment section. What would you do with that ball if you were the one that caught it? I saw they ushered the fan out there. So I'm sure she'll probably get something. Maybe an autograph. Maybe a jersey because I'm sure that's probably a special ball for Otani. Philip Subia. This team knows everyone has to contribute or they're going to stand out like a sore thumb and they doing it. Ha ha ha. I think that Shohei Otani, look, the rising tide lifts all boats. I think just the mere presence of Shohei Otani and knowing that all the eyeballs around Major League Baseball were going to be on this team, you wanted to be at your best knowing how much attention this team was going to get. And I think that across the board, you already have MVPs and All-Stars, but I think everyone just put in a little more work this offseason. Wanted to elevate their game just a little bit knowing what's at stake, the expectations for this team, the kind of intention this team was going to get. And you're seeing not just the Mookie Betts, who are having a historic start of the season. Not just the Freddie Freemans who are having a great start. Not just the Stars, it's the Kike Hernandezes. It's the Miguel Rojases who are off to good starts. It's the Teoscar Hernandezes who have contributed very significantly early on. So I definitely think it is the Otani effect. So BC, LOL, little Cubbies won't make the playoffs. Bellinger due for regression. By the way, settling guys, we're going to try to do at least 100 post-game shows this season. We got the home run was a nail in the coffin for San Francisco, but it was extremely relevant because Daniel Hudson gave a dinger to Jorge Soler. And it's very interesting because before the game, Dave said that Daniel Hudson was probably going to be the guy in the ninth. Ultimately, it ended up being Denelson Lamette, who I have some, had some comments on. We'll talk about his appearance for sure. Glass now played great for five innings. Yeah, I think Tyler Glass now is doing what great pitchers do. And the difference between good, elite, and great pitchers in Major League Baseball is the elite ones, they can go out there and have a lot of success even when they don't have their best stuff. He still doesn't have that curveball like he's going to have it throughout the middle to the end of the season to maybe the next couple starts, right? That pitch is, along with Devin Williams's airbender, one of the most effective pitches in all of Major League Baseball. In fact, statistically, it's right behind Devin Williams' airbender when it comes to getting whiffs. And he just hasn't had that pitch at his disposal like he likes it. I talked to Tyler Glassdown about this, and he said, look, it's just the feel is 
isn't there early on with that pitch, and he's going to correct it. He's going to get that pitch. It's an extremely important part of his arsenal. He's mainly living off a lot of fastball, which is explosive. You're seeing 97, 98 on the heater and that devastating slider. But look, I mean, Glass now, if you're a wins guy, which I'm not, he's 2-0, and but he goes six innings, Gave up three earned runs off four hits, had seven strikeouts. But how about this? A hundred innings. I mean, a hundred pitches. A hundred pitches, 67 for strikes, 15 for 24 on first pitch strikes. He ends up getting 10 swinging strikes. So you're going to see more swing and miss. You're going to see bigger punch out numbers from him. But he went out there and he got the job done. And I think Glass now, you kind of look at some of his at-bats. We'll kind of break it down here. On Wednesday, Patrick Bailey, he was off. He was on point tonight. I mean, Patrick Bailey was seeing Tyler Glass now really well. He ends up getting two hits off him, including a solo home run there in the third inning. But up until Jorge Soler's and Conforto's hits later in the game, outside of Bailey, the Giants had gone 0 for 16 against Glass now until that Jorge Soler double that put runners on second and third with one out there in the sixth. And then Michael Conforto, he had a, on a 2 2 pitch, he singled to score two runs and pull the San Francisco Giants within a run. So, yeah, for the most part, he was handling the Giants lineup with relative ease. But in that sixth inning did get into a little bit of trouble there and it wasn't terrible I mean Soler that was a 1-1 pitch it was a fastball really not the worst pitch down the zone Soler just a very powerful and talented hitter he went out there and got it left it a little up definitely and then the next batter Conforto you had a 2-2 count then he fouls off the fifth pitch the four seam fastball up and then on the single it was a curveball that just hung there it was a little cement mixing curveball that stayed in the zone and just didn't have that bite or that depth so that's going to be the difference between a outing where you go six innings and you throw 100 pitches and you only give up one run versus when you give up three is when he has the feel for that third pitch that curveball you're going to see him go out there and pitch six and seven innings of one run two run ball so I still feel very good about Tyler Glass now I think he went out there like I said after a bullpen game and giving the Dodgers exactly what they needed some length 100 pitches six innings but let me know down below in the comment section what grade do you give Tyler Glass now like I said this is someone who told me that he wants to set a new career high in innings pitched and game started most innings he's pitched in a season is 120 so he wants to eclipse that with the Dodgers and I think he's on his way to doing that. The injury-prone Tyler Glass now, that was Glass then. This is Glass now. But let's dive in the comments. DMAC, you said today for everyone to relax. We knew he'd go long. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> this is Shohei Otani, okay? I mean, it's not a bold take when someone is this talented that knows how to go up there. And he, he goes up there and he does damage, okay? That's what he's up there to do. So you're going to see some swing and miss. You're going to see some strikeouts, okay? Yo, DMAC, he did it. What up, Noah Ortega? What up, Ronald? Yeah, he's human. We got Cubbies. They don't want that smoke. We got Ipe caught the home run ball and sold it. That's the comment of the show. Fire take from Cesar over on YouTube. Show talked about it post game. That's from Justin Otani. Go Tani. That's from Mostly Claus over there. I like that one. Los Doyers. I'd give the home run ball to Otani's wife. Classy move right there. I respect that. Uh, BC, I would have damaged. This is what you guys would have done with that home run ball. I would have demanded life time tickets including playoffs for that first home run ball i like that a, a tough bargain running a tough bargain there mr bc as she gave up that ball for two hats a baseball and a bat i think you could do a little more than that but hey a baseball bat of otani is it otani's bat because anything otani is going to be very valuable d so we got the under we got the actual answer doom underscore south d max she got a bat two hats and a ball hey if those are autographed that's a great package right there that's i mean look, we're talking about it's not like it's a milestone home run as far as the 500th home run or anything like that first home run is a dodger i think she came out there on top me being a jersey guy myself i might have said keep the two hats i want the jersey because you could frame it you can wear it. You can be in front of your TV and pretend like you're Shohei Otani during the games. I know you guys have done that before. Come on now. <laughs> you broke thinking on the team. Otani's swing looks so effortless. It's so powerful. It's so compact. And like I said, get used to this. This was the first of many. And it's great to get that first one out of the way. Now I can just exhale. Whew. 
take a deep breath and just go out there and be who he is. And that is the most explosive hitter on the planet. But uh, called Shohei. What up, Roy Estrada over there? The fan will get a white Porsche. Delirium 9. That's what I would want. That's what, that, that Delirium, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I was saying a, a couple episodes ago when they asked me that question. Hey, give me the Joe Kelly's wife's special, right? Give me that Porsche, right? Give me that Porsche. And then maybe you can put uh, the bat in there. But uh, yeah, that, I like that. That's a fire take from Delirium over there. D-Train called it. Love how the Otani haters are getting blocked. Who's I'm not, I don't really block anyone, to be honest, unless they're saying really, really hateful stuff. But uh, I, I'm not blocking any Otani. Otani also did it with his wheels today. Yeah, let's let's break down this game a little more in depth here. And you look at the, the bottom of the second inning. Teoscar Hernandez, he strikes out. Swinging Max Muncy, 3-2 pitch. He takes a changeup inside for ball four, giving the Dodgers a one-out base runner. Then 0-1 pitch, Kike, he's single on a ground ball to left. Chris Taylor, he draws a walk. And the next batter, Miguel Rojas. 2-2 pitch. He hits a chopper up the middle. They get the out at second. A run scores to give the Dodgers an early 1-0 lead. And then Mookie, he flies out. So the Dodgers, they strike first blood there in the bottom of the second. Jump to the top of the third. At 0-1 pitch, Patrick Bailey, he homers to right to tie the score at one apiece. We talked about it a little earlier. Patrick Bailey, a lot of success tonight against Tyler Glass. Now, and on the home run, it was an 0-1 pitch, and it was just a slider that didn't have that bite, caught a little too much of the plate, and Bailey put a good swing on it. So sometimes you just got to tip your cap. Then the bottom of the third inning, let's talk about this one. Otani gets a leadoff single on a ball where he beats – the throw to first, and, and a couple batters later, 0-2 pitch, Will Smith, he doubles past Chapman to left. Otani scores from first to give the Dodgers a 2-1 to lead. So almost as impressive as that bomb was, like you just pointed out, was the wheels of Shohei Otani. Check this out. Check out Otani scoring from first. That Will Smith doubles to left. 0-2 pitch, great piece of two-strike hitting there by Will Smith. And Otani on his horse beats the throw with the slide, a little safe sign. I mean, that's what makes Otani special. This guy, he's a six-tool player when you consider everything he brings. But he can also beat you with his legs. I mean, he hustled to first just to get on base. And then he scores from first on a double to left. So very impressive base. Let's take a look at it one more. Let's take a look at the one more time. Just boom, little... Nice little, you know, pass the gold glover right there, Matt Chapman. And you're thinking, okay, does Dino hold him up? It's one out. Nope. Here we go. Otani shows that speed. And I think you're going to see that become another big element of his game this season. The career high for stolen bases for Shohei is 26. I like to see him get at least 30 this year and utilize those legs. Then jump to the bottom of the fourth inning. 1-0 pitch to Miguel Rojas. He takes a fastball up in the zone for a home run. His second of the season. That extended the Dodgers lead to 4-1. to Like we said earlier in the show, Rojas, two home Home runs in eight ABs last year. It took him 257 ABs to leave the yard. So I don't know if this is sustainable. I don't know if this version of Miguel Rojas is what we're getting this season, but it definitely makes you feel a lot better about those late game substitutions or anytime you do have a left handed pitcher on the mound, you have Miguel Rojas starting at shortstop and you have Mookie Betts at second. It makes you wonder is that their best lineup when you're considering everything, when you're considering defense? when you're considering run prevention and having a top five defensive shortstop in Miguel Rojas and then Mookie Betts playing second base, a less strenuous position that's going to take not as much of a toll on him and allow him to focus on at what he can do at the plate. So it makes you wonder. I think it really all depends on the production of Gavin Lux. Yesterday, he had a big double, so he's trending in the right direction. Really, it just comes down to the fact the Dodgers have a ton of talent and a ton of depth. That's why this team, from a roster standpoint, it's as good as any team in Major League Baseball. Only team I think can even consider stacking up with them is the Atlanta Braves. We'll see them when we beat them in the NLCS. And then the top of the 
sixth inning. Tyler Glass now, he's back out there for the sixth after he got Jung Hoo Lee to ground out. He walked Lamont Wade, then 1 1 to Solaire. He doubled to right, giving the Giants runners on second and third with one out. And then 2 2 to Conforto. Conforto single to right for a two run single. Wade and Solaire, they come around to score. That makes it 4 to 3 Dodgers. Giants pull within one. And like I said, curveball left it up didn't break and look give Conforto credit he took advantage of it so yeah the tight game at that point then bottom of the seven we talked about it. 3-1 count Shohei Otani takes Rogers deep sinker on the out of third we got to see it again Boom! Shohei Otani. You're going to remember the game. You're going to remember where you were. You're going to remember everything about it. You're going to remember the pitcher because that's a special moment. When a guy like Shohei Otani, when you consider the offseason, when you consider everything that went into his free agency, this is a moment that you're going to have with you because, look, you have all these home runs in between. You're going to have these big signature moments. We'll have his first walk-off home run at some point, his first walk-off hit at some point point but you always remember your first and then top of the eighth Solaire he homered to make it five to four five to four the Giants pull within one Otani's home run made it five to three so like I said that end up being the difference was Otani's home run and then how about Denelson Lamette recording his first save of his career I mean he comes out there he gets two strikeouts he gets a ground out and he made light work of that Giants team and the Dodgers they get the dub he records his first save of his career the Dodgers sweep the Giants and they go 6-1 and one on this homestand your Los Angeles Dodgers are going out there and they're getting the job done sitting at 7-2. and two. They head to Wrigley to take on Cody Bellinger and the Chicago Cubs. Oh, what a night at the Ravine. How about the Giants? Season finished. SF stands for season finished. Already sitting at 2-5. and five. All right, guys, so let's head to the comments section and continue to break this one down. Shohei Otani, first home run as a Dodger. I would have just wanted a game used bat in a jersey. That's from Philip Subia over on YouTube. S and S. Shohei hit that so hard the ball took a new pronoun. Okay, uh, OG faded. That's 30k plus if you keep it. OG faded. That's that's a really good way to put it. I mean, you look at but but it's 30k plus if you keep it. But am I getting autographed baseballs from Shohei Otani? And am I getting a game used jersey? I'm looking for game use stuff. I mean, for me, it starts and ends with that. Game use stuff or Porsche, or I'm taking the ball and we're going straight to eBay. Okay? <laughs> Let's be honest here, okay? I mean, for me, uh, uh, it'd be kind of weird because I'm a member of the media. They were like, why were you in the pavilion catching baseballs? But still, I digress. Give me a Porsche from Boomer Assassin. DM, I like this. Such a clean comment here. This team is immaculate. This team is so much fun. This team from top to bottom, it feels like a completely new era. Even though you have some of the same players in Mookie and Freddie and Will and Muncie, Chris Taylor, Kike, I mean, all these same guys, it just feels like a new chapter of Dodger baseball. Like the stink of the last two postseasons just doesn't feel like it's there anymore. And I think a lot of that is washed away when you make these big signings and you sign Otani and Yamamoto and you trade and extend Glass down and you sign Teoscar Hernandez. But still, I think it's more having to do with just how Mookie has entered this season, how Freddie has entered this season, how they look like they're pissed off about what happened and that they're on a mission to go out there and win another World Series for this franchise. So it definitely feels like a whole new era. Alex, crowd was so insane. Sounded like a postseason game. Alex, were you at the game? I'm actually a little under the weather, so wasn't able to go tonight. But... Yeah, the, you can see. I mean, uh, give me Juan Uribe vibes. Give me Cody Bellinger, Game 3, 2021 NLCS vibes, where that pavilion's shaking. I mean, as far as an early season home run from a, a non-walk-off, that's about as electric as it's going to get at Dodger Stadium. So I'd love to hear that, though. DMAC, the GOAT for calling the home run PD. Look, I get the vibes. My spidey senses start tingling, okay? And I just sitting there, and I'm saying, you know what? I think Otani's had enough, and I think it's a left. He's going to square it up a little bit. I think that Otani has been struggling on some inside fastballs. I thought that Rodgers would hit him on the outer quadrant up in the zone and that Otani would be able to get extended. And I was just really just trying to manifest this. So I just look, I mean, Otani is someone who he put his faith into this organization and 
he just feels like he's ours now, right? Ten years with this organization in the prime of his career. Have to absolutely embrace this guy and just really give him everything. And we got the Hudson B plus from Mr. Classic Homegirls. By the way, did you see their handshake with uh, Yamamoto and Otani? I'm going to have to pull that clip tomorrow, but <laughs> the Zesty Dodgers are definitely back. Let's put it that way. Showtime in Otani Zilla Nation. That's from RC22. Immaculate Divas from Muncie. Muncie's definitely playing better defensively. D-Mac Shuey for a San Francisco Giants sweep. 199 Vasquez. Look, Ricky Vasquez 199. I'm going to screenshot this. I owe you guys some Shueys. We're going to be back to normal pretty soon here. I'm going to just, I'm going to give you some serious shoeys. Trust me. I got, I got some surprises for you this season. D-Mac wants the jersey, pants, and jock strap. Chief, come on now. Come on, man. <laughs> Who is this Otani guy from DS? Otani just getting started. D-Mac from David Sabatini. Shoey for show. Hey, D, I don't have any beer right now, so, but we'll get some shoeys popping pretty soon. I guarantee it, guys. Uh, I would have asked for a lot more. Kept the ball. Kept it. D-Mac, Teoscar, stay blue. Mookie is hitting under five 500 now needs to step it up. Yeah, Sam, absolutely right. He needs to step it up. What up, Nando? Nando, uh, 390. Nando, uh, Bob Nightingale, player of the game, Josh Groban. <laughs> okay, it's uh, interesting. Sing the national anthem on uh, opening day. Otani hit the ball over Toronto. <laughs> That's from Nando, 390. Uh, never really realized how fast Otani was. Holy crap, he is fast. He's got the Jets. He has that kind of speed that he doesn't hit second and third gear until he really starts going. So when he can get a lot of momentum, momentum going from first to home you're going to see that speed pick up and yeah he's someone that from a sprint speed standpoint he's dropped off a little bit over over the years but I'm anxious to see when those first uh, when those first uh, little uh, stat cast baseball savant readings come out, what his sprint speed is at. Because last season, I mean, he was still well above average. He was in the 63rd percentile in sprint speed, 27.8 feet per uh, second. Or yeah, and I think that uh, Shohei Otani is going to go out there and prove that uh, he's can, he can impact the game in so many different ways. And you saw that on full display play tonight so yeah I think that a lot of Dodgers fans just kind of think of, okay he's going to be that big slugger go out there hit doubles triples home runs but no he's definitely very fast for sure Otani is overrated five years of the Angels and didn't do anything not even a playoff game not to mention seats at the Angels will go for eight bucks lol that's from S okay we got someone that's a little saltier than Dodgers peanuts here because look Otani was the Bugatti at the trailer park meme in Anaheim he had butter knives around him. He was playing for a terrible organization. This is not football. This is not where Patrick Mahomes can have the ball in his hands anytime they're on offense. This is not where Steph Curry can have the ball in his hands on offense. He gets four or five at-bats a game surrounded by junk, trash. I think that that's more of an indictment on how, how terrible the Anna Slime Angels are as a franchise. Nando 390, was Lamette the only option to close? Good, good for him on well-doing. I mean, a lot of the guys were limited, and Dave said that he was going to have – I mean, how about Joe Kelly, by the way? I want to point out Joe Kelly. Joe Kelly was was really outstanding in his work today because Joe Kelly went out there after – a couple of after a rocky series against the St. Louis Cardinals, and I thought he pitched very, very well there in – the seventh inning, a one, two, three inning. I mean, Bailey was causing him fits, had a seven pitch at bat. He strikes him out swinging with a 98 mile per hour, 14 fastball. He got Ahmed swinging with a slider in the zone. So, definitely a, an impressive appearance by Joe Kelly. Gavin Lux is on notice. That's from Anthony Keene. It's something to consider as far as, look, if anything, this just really makes him have to go out there and produce because if he falls into a slump, a, an extended slump, and Mookie, we know he wants to be a second baseman long term. Miguel Rojas, statistically, by essentially every defensive metric, is a top five shortstop in Major League Baseball. Those guys are hard to find. Those guys do not grow on trees. There's about 10 of these guys on the planet that go out there and do anything offensively worth noting and going out there and performing with the glove like he can. So it's definitely just a little storyline to monitor. How about that? Too hyped to sleep. LOL, Jazz Rod. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you, man. I'd be dreaming of Otani's bomb. Justin SD was reportedly close 
supposed to trade for both Arise and Luzardo. Don't know how they would have used Arise, though. Look, I think Luzardo, my pick is he goes to the Orioles. I think that's where he ends up getting traded to. Uh, the fans should have gotten more for the ball. Sucks for CT3 because Dave likes his utility. Say it louder, D-Max. CT, that is from uh, Philip Subio. It's the scroll down here, guys. Rock with us here on the Dodgers Nation post-game show. After the Dodgers sweep the San Francisco Giants, they're 7-2 and two on the year, and they're absolutely living up to the hype so far. And they're not even close to really. I mean, this is the first night that Otani has really slugged in a big way. The bottom of the lineup, the first time they really got going was a couple yesterday. So this team is not even close to firing on all cylinders, and they're still going out there, and they're getting the job done. So this team extremely early. It's so, so early, but they look really good, and the talent's showing out. Jose, hey, DMAC, how impressed are you with the lineup and how they grind out at bats? Jose Martinez, I couldn't be more impressed. I mean, you look at what Teoscar Hernandez, we didn't even talk about Teoscar Hernandez, who went out there today, and he gave the Dodgers another boost offensively. I mean, Teoscar ends up moving up a spot in the lineup today. You see him batting fifth. He went two for four. He goes two for four, and Teoscar Hernandez is a big reason why this lineup is able to score consistently. I mean, bottom of the third, we talked about Shohei Otani scoring from first on that Will Smith double. Well, guess what? Teoscar Hernandez, first pitch changeup, he singles to left to score Will Smith to tack on another run. So, yeah, Teoscar Hernandez has been monster. And the at-bat quality, he's going to strike out a good amount. That's just a part of his game. But he's also going to do a lot of damage. And I think that within this team, you're seeing a lot of, even the guys struggling, like James Outman hitting the ball hard. But this team is not going to expand the zone. They're going to make pitchers throw their pitches, right? They're going to make pitchers work and work within the zone. And that's what this team does. They work counts. They make pitchers throw strikes. They don't expand the zone. And you're seeing from top to bottom, that really is the philosophy. I mean, Mookie Betts is someone who I mean, they've tried to bust him high and inside when he's slumping. They don't like to get him extended. He's still able to get to anything. He's covering all sides of the plate right now. But, yeah, it's been most impressive. And I think that these are the kind of at-bats, the at-bat quality that's going to play up in the postseason. So there are things that you can develop now that will absolutely help this team when it matters most in October. Give me your sweaty socks from J.A. Let's calm it down. Post-game Giant show has been canceled. Post-game Warriors show will be aired in its place. That's from Mr. Seabad. Delirium 9. Dieter has been playing awesome. Akira if Kudube music God, yeah, Godzilla soundtrack during some of Otani's at bats. I've been noticing a little switch up from that, and I'm gonna kind of talk to him next time I go to the stadium about little things he's tweaking with some of these new players. But uh, how's the wife Nando? Yeah, how how is the wife Nando? What did she think of the home run? Otani almost hit it to Anaheim from Craig Osterberg. Fire Roberts, of course, from Jason Diamond. I'll volunteer as a moderator, banning foos. Uh, Coach, there's probably some salty Angels fans that are just crying and punching air, and they're ready for their Anthony Rendon little rally they're doing. So stupid. Uh, but a couple more here, guys, and then I'll let you enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, crazy how the Padres and Giants thought they had a great team by beating each other. LOL, Mr. Sir. Yeah, there is a nice little battle for second place in the NL West. Dodgers are going to run away with this division. Mark my words on that one. Alex Teoscar is dating Taylor Swift. I didn't see that one coming. Hey, I'm happy for them. I mean, definitely, definitely an upgrade from Travis Kelsey for sure, right? Are the Giants a major league team? DS, that's TBD. That's TBD. Um, regret drafting Acuna first rather than Mookie. Ah, oh, you went with the. You know, I got Acuna too. I'm not gonna lie. Acuna Matata. Mookie would have been the pick as of right now. So. I think you're going to have a good year with Acuna, though. Don't worry. What up, Carnivorous Lunar Activity? I met Michael Lorenzen here at the airport. That's awesome, guys. Well, there's a couple more here, and then we will, we will exit stage right because the show has begun and this season really feels like it's taking on a new life even though the Dodgers have had a ton of success that first Otani home run let's see it once more before we head out of here boom 3-1 count Shohei Otani let's go I like the home run trot I like the rounding second here there we go that crowd was on their feet. Electric. By the way, did you see Teoscar Hernandez throw the sunflower seeds in his face? I thought that was hilarious. I don't know if it's on that clip, but yeah, you can go and find that. 
But uh, a couple more here. Shohei Utani with the Saki bomb tonight. Uh, <laughs> Jay Bullet, I got diarrhea when Joe Kelly came out. Come on now. That's, that's a bruh. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of the Dodger Nation Post Game Show. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Like I said, we're doing more shows than ever here. We got the Dodgers dugout live in the mornings. That's where we're going to have interviews, breakdowns in the morning time. You won't want to miss that show. A little more of a deep dive on some of these quick reaction post game shows. But we're doing post game shows all season long. We're doing giveaways all season long. So make sure you're subscribed to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel, the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Thanks again for rocking with us as always. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. And until next time, think blue.